With a fearlessness unmatched and unwavering magnitude of relentless fury and determination, Darius Geis enters the 2018 fantasy football season ready to fit the bill as a viable fantasy option in all league formats. We will look at the skill set and context of Darius Geis within the Washington Redskins and project where that slots him in 2018 fantasy drafts. First, we will look at Geis' scheme versatility. Most NFL teams incorporate gap and zone-based runs, and the Washington Redskins are no different. His knowledge and experience in both systems should help accelerate his transition onto the field and into fantasy lineups. Here we have a fundamental running play, power, and this will illustrate Geis' involvement with gap scheme runs. Illustrated are the key blocks at the point of attack. The offensive line wants to create a specific opening or gap for guys to run through. So, how do they create this specific gap or slot? It takes two sides or walls or seals to create a gap. On the left side of the gap, we get three down blocks. The blockers are pushing the defenders down the line of scrimmage and away from the gap designed for guys to run through. The right guard blocks down on his defender, the nose tackle, and the right tackle and tight end work together to seal off the other down lineman at the point of attack, thus creating the left wall of the gap. The other side of the wall is created by the second tight end at the end of the line of scrimmage, kicking out or blocking his defender towards the sideline. This puts the tight end between the contained defender and the gap. And now we have our tunnel created for guys to run through. A linebacker will try and fill the gap in order to shut the run down, but the pulling guard wraps around to drive out any inserted defender. We begin to see the gap taking form as the blockers begin their attack on the respective defenders and the guard comes through to clean up any blockage of Geis's path. And if you give Geis that kind of hole, he has the athletic ability to acquire a grand allotment of yards, tallying up large fantasy points. Geis also has experience in zone blocking schemes. And the zone game is a staple of the Washington Redskin offense. The blocking schemes, running back reads, and entry points often vary considerably from team to team and coach to coach. For this zone play, what must happen is securing the first level of defenders, in this case the four down linemen. Remember, down linemen just refers to the players in a three or four point stance, which just means that they have their hand on the ground, as opposed to just standing up on two feet. By rushing outside and into the D-gap, the defensive end has essentially taken himself out of the play. The real key will be moving the interior defensive lineman. LSU does this with double teams. The uncovered right tackle moves up to the second level to take a linebacker. And again, the other defensive end nullifies himself since the play is designed to go inside. Once the double teams have been firmly secured of those interior defensive linemen, one of the blockers is now free to climb to the second level and seek out a free-floating linebacker. In basic terms, the running back will have a landmark and a read. A landmark tells the running back where he needs to go once he receives the ball. Here, the landmark is the outside leg of the play side guard. A read will tell the running back whether he will continue on his current trajectory or if he needs to alter his path. And the read is the first down lineman on the play side of the center. And if this down lineman stays put or goes away from the play, guys will just carry on through the open play side gap. If, however, the lineman widens and works play side, which he does here, occupying the intended gap, then Geis will have the option to bend it, 
bounce it, or bang it up in the other downhill gap. And that's what he does. When we examine the running back usage from a year ago, we see that Robert Kelly, Chris Thompson, and Samaj P. Ryan were the primary backs. Thompson was easily the best of the three, and when he was fully healthy, the offense in many ways ran through him. He proved to be a viable playmaker in the backfield and passing game. He played 10 games last year before breaking his fibula against New Orleans. Before his injury, he was on pace for 62 receptions and over 800 yards of receiving. He was averaging over 13 yards a catch per pro football reference. Pre-draft, player personnel executive Doug Williams stated that there was no doubt that the Redskins needed to upgrade the running back position. He referenced the low yards per carry average as being a primary factor, not exactly a ringing endorsement for P. Ryan and Kelly. The offensive line has great pieces in Trent Williams, Morgan Moses, and Brandon Sheriff, but injuries to the line and numerous ball carriers easily derailed the running game as last season progressed. For football outsiders, the combination of Washington's running backs and offensive line accounted for one of the worst tandems in short yardage runs, second level runs, and third level runs. It wasn't just the offensive line's inability to get pushed in the trenches. If a running back was able to get to the second level, they struggled to create more yards by their own running ability. So where does Geis fit into all of this? Barring a disastrous camp in preseason, it's easy to pencil in Geis as the early down back for Washington. Can he be their feature back? Feature back being defined as receiving the most running back touches. He will be. To start the season, it will be by default. Geis will work the early downs with Chris Thompson as your third down back and Rob Kelly or Samaj P. Ryan, whoever rosters the third running back spot on the depth chart and survives the preseason battle, will serve to spell Geis. Game script will be key as well. If the Redskins are leading in the fourth quarter, expect Geis to stay on the field and accumulate more touches as the bulk of the offense will run through him. After Saquon Barkley, Darius Geis is the next rookie running back to come off the board. We believe in Geis' upside, and standard scoring begin drafting him in round three. In PPR leagues, round four. His touches and point totals will increase as the season progresses. We have looked at the numerous skills and characteristics that make up Darius Geis' play and how they transfer into NFL fantasy production. In addition, we discuss the various aspects of context that define Geis' place within the structure of the Washington Redskins. The summation of these variables conclude that Darius Geis has the type of running back traits that convert into weekly fantasy production. We wish you nothing but the best in your fantasy 2018 ventures. Thank you for watching. This has been a Doom Pro presentation.